G'day everyone and welcome to Brushes with Beck. This video is a drawing of cat eyes and the fur surrounding their eye in coloured pencil. For this piece I am using A4 sized Fabriano Artistico hot pressed watercolour paper and I am using Faber-Castell Polychromos coloured pencils and Derwent Drawing coloured pencils. Now this is a close-up of one of my cats, my cat Jasper. Um, if you've watched my video that I uploaded two weeks ago, I did a more focused a video of colouring in just one of her eyes. So if you'd like to see that, go and check out the link in the cards. That's sort of slow, it's still sped up, but it's slowed down a lot more. That's only about two or three times speed. This is about 30 times speed. So if you're interested in that, go and check out that video. But this video is just about my layering process and the fur texture and how I built up those colors and got to this detailed piece over the course of many many hours. So as you can see I I start by layering in without any detail. I put in base tones, these can be ivories, or light browns, yellows, um, light sienna depending on the color tone of the fur that goes above it. And then as I build up those layers, I start to add in that detail. With the eye, I do recommend you go and watch the other video I recommended that focuses a lot more on this and I go a lot more in depth as to how I colored that eye. But for the most part, like with any other colored pencil piece, you're just building up layers of color over time and slowly strengthening those colors and adding different color tones and building up to your shadows. So if you enjoy this kind of video, I upload these sorts of videos relatively often about my colored pencil process. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and turn on those notifications with the bell button so you can be notified about future videos of mine as I frequently do these time-lapse style videos where I show you my process and go through what I've done for each piece. Now the timing of this video was such that my cat Jasper actually got an ulcer in her eye while I was working on this piece, which was kind of crazy because it was the eye that I hadn't completed at the time when I was up to this stage on the piece. It was a really crazy coincidence. Fortunately that is now healed. She had to have surgery on her eye, but her eye is looking wonderful now and it's almost completely cleared up. So the eye on this piece you can see I've just worked in slowly building up those different colors and especially with the pupil you can see I've gone in with blue first and not with black or brown or anything like that. I'm trying to get some nice depth to those dark colors so I like to go in with the blue and start with that before I build up to the really solid blacks and that helps to get a really nice coverage and a nice rich black without having to burnish too hard on the paper. Now with the fur, in this corner here, I've actually used an embossing tool to press in whiskers so I don't color in those areas. It's much easier with colored pencil rather than avoiding a long thin line to use a tool to indent those whiskers into the paper so that you don't color in that area and they're left nice and, nice and bright and white for the final um, for the finished piece. Now in this corner there's not a lot of detail in this fur. It's mostly a dark out of focus area because it's her neck so it's not in focus. So I've just worked that in before working into further areas of the piece. Now my technique with fur, um, apart from popping in my base layers before adding in my fur strands, as I am building up darker color in the fur, and you'll see this more in the top right corner of the piece than in this area, what I tend to do is the fur strands that I place in initially with some of my lighter colors, I then go over those same strands as I build up the darks. So this means that I'm not filling in all of the light spaces behind, I'm only darkening up what's already there. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but it might become more clear as we work through the piece. So I found this area of the piece leading into the cheek the most challenging and I avoided starting the cheek for some time 
because I wasn't quite sure how to get the detail in, how to go from that bright white overlapping the, the dark of the neck there and how to build up that color in the cheek area. But I got there in the end and it turned out quite nicely. And it really is for me just a matter of diving in and approaching it with what I feel I need to do and just going for it. Uh, you may have seen there on my black polychromos pencil was a silver uh, pencil extender. If you don't recognize that, it's by Derwent. It just, the end, your pencil just slips into the end of it and you can tighten it and it makes it easier to hold your shorter pencils. So I've used a lot of different color tones in this pale area. Warm grays, yellows, oranges, browns, just really building up those different color tones and getting it to stand out in the way that I want, having some nice fur strands visible. Moving across to the top of the head, as you can see, you can't really see it that well, but you can see I went in with a color there that I believe that was ivory from Derwent Drawing. It's a very, very easy to lay down color, the Derwent Drawing colors, because they are wax based and they give cover a nice large area quite quickly. And then I'm able to go over that area knowing that I've already covered the white tooth and it's not going to be as bright if I leave any gaps showing. Now in this section, you can see I'm using some, I think that's Caput Mortem Violet and some browns leading into the black fur strands. So I haven't gone straight in with black there again. I've used different color tones underneath to not only blend that black in from the more orange fur, but also to give it more depth to that rather than just being flat black. Now cat fur changes direction so frequently on the face, especially across the bridge of the nose. And some of these fur strands are so short, it's really important to pay very close attention to your pencil strokes. Keep them really, really short. Watch where the fur changes direction. In some spots, the fur is so short that you only need to draw sort of little dashes or dots. You don't need to even do a strand of fur. So just keep that in mind as you're working through something like the face of a cat. There's so many different changes in fur direction mm. that it's really, really important to make note of that. Now working on the nose, I did make an error on the nose. The Our right hand side or my cat's left hand side of the nose, I brought that edge in too far across so the nose looks a little bit lopsided. And I noticed that after I completed the nose, I think because I was working reaching across from where my camera was it was a little bit awkward and I wasn't looking at it straight on so I later adjusted that and you can see I used my Tombow eraser to erase some of that pigment so I could go over it more easily and that adjusted quite easily I didn't have too much trouble fixing that so don't be too worried if you make mistakes they can be quite um, a lot of times they can be quite easily remedied and that's not my first that's not my last mistake in this piece, nor is it my probably my worst one. My worst one was on the other eye, but you would have seen that if you watched my previous video. The nose I found to be quite challenging. I decided to pop in some white areas first and work around those for the little highlights on the nose texture. Now cat nose pads are quite interesting because each nose pad has a very unique texture, like kind of like a human fingerprint. So I wanted to make sure that I included that texture on the nose, not specifically, but I needed to make sure that the texture was visible. So I only added that at the very end after I had used all my color tones and built up the color, the lights and the darks on that nose. And then I added in the little crescents for texture on there. Now in this area, you'll start to see more what I meant earlier when I said that I only lay color over strands that I have already drawn. Um, so once I am building up my darker colors, 
I tend to put in not only less first strands, but I will go over the first strands that I've already drawn rather than putting the darker color in between those first strands. Because if I put the darker color in between the strands, I'm going to cover up so much of my paper that the lighter colors aren't underneath aren't going to show through. But if I put my darker colors over my existing first strands, I can preserve some of those lighter areas more easily and some of that base color and build up the darkness without losing the tones from underneath without filling up too much of those colors. And that's what I've done above the eye there that you can see. And also in that light patch next to the eye, I'm working over the same first strands repeatedly rather than filling in more of the pale area. Now onto this second eye. As I said, this is the video once again that I uploaded a couple of weeks ago. Go and check that out. If you haven't already, it's definitely worth a watch because I go more in depth as to how I color in this eye and I list every color that I've used to create it so that you can draw it as well. I definitely uh, found this eye much easier, although I did make a mistake. It was quite a big one. The upper eyelid uh, was too small. I brought the fur down much too far and I had to adjust that eyelid. Fortunately, I was able to use my tracing from my original sketch to lay over the top of my drawing and compare how much I needed to expand on that eyelid. And you can see, you'll be able to see me laying over the tracing paper over my image just to compare how much I needed to extend out that eyelid to make it look more accurate. So I really, really enjoyed working on the eyes and building up that color and seeing how it changed the eye over time and made it more, much more of a 3D object rather than just a flat circle. I really enjoyed that process and I found it very rewarding. So just working through that and finishing up the eye, making a few little final adjustments and you'll see me fixing up that eyelid and comparing it to my sketch, just expanding on it. So same process with more fur over here as with previous parts of the image. I always like to go in with my lightest color first and then I'll pick something a little bit darker and tend to map out the layout of the fur pattern a little bit and use messy pencil strokes and blend them out and not really do my refined pencil strokes until I'm a few layers in. It really depends on how dark the fur is how much and how much of the base layer I want to cover up or retain. And as you can see, once again, I'm doing my darker pencil strokes over the top of my existing pencil strokes to maintain some of that lighter fur and it gives quite a nice effect. So just working through the piece and building up those layers and slowly making progress on the completion of the piece. Now, when I was younger, I didn't used to like working in segmented sections in this way because I didn't think I would be able to tie an entire piece together. I thought it would look too disjointed and different. And some of my early works may have some of that appearance, some of that appearance the first portrait that I did of my cat Jasper, which I'll link in the cards above, there is quite a significant difference in some of the areas that I worked on in the piece as I worked my way through and my technique developed and changed as I improved. Uh, there's a slight difference in that piece from one side to the other and I actually had to go back and work through some of the first side that I did just to tie things in together a little more so that they looked more unified because my technique did alter a little bit but that was one of my earlier realistic pieces and I've been doing a bit more work since then and I find that it's much easier now to maintain a style throughout a piece and maintain color tones than it was when I first started doing realistic pieces. Plus I find that filming my work actually gives me the benefit of if I'm unsure as to what colors I've laid down in an area, I can look back in my video and go, oh, that's the color I used. So that's really beneficial for me in that regard. So 
this is pretty much the finished piece I'm just doing a few finishing touches here and there I've got to add whisker spots on this side but as you can see it's a really this is sped up about I can't remember how much it's like 30 times or something like that this is a really really time-consuming piece there's a lot of detail a lot of changing fur direction different fur patterns and colors and so it wasn't just a quick little piece and but it's important to put the time in where it's needed so that you get the result that you want to have so I try not to look at a piece as a whole because it can be too daunting to go oh my goodness how am I ever going to draw this cat's face there's so much fur there's so much detail the eyes look so complicated and uh, just tackle it in sections one bit at a time refine little areas pick an area to work in and work in that focus on that and make it how you want to be then move on to the next area I find that working in that way helps me to manage and not panic about things because I don't have to worry about the whole piece I can just work on one area at a time so I do hope you've enjoyed this video once again if you enjoyed it please like this video comment down below and subscribe to my channel remember to hit that notification bell button to be notified when I upload a new sing a new video which is every single week and thank you very much for watching I'll see you next week for another video stay creative